y'all. It's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another gardening video. So today I have a few things to plant. Not a lot, but I figured might as well pop out here and talk about it just a little bit. So the first two things I have to plant are some more of these really pretty blue lobelias. So they are smaller. They only get six to 12 inches tall, but they do get pretty wide. And I picked up two more, one here and one down there for the new garden bed. When I first got these, I think I got one, two, three, four, five of them. Um, and I really liked them. But I went back to get some more for this bed. They were sold out. So went back this week and they had some more. I was very excited. So I grabbed a one for all the way down at the end. I needed just one more down there and two for this garden bed to just kind of tie it all together and give it that short little fun front layer that I needed in a few places. So we're going to pop those in and then I'm going to be planting some Proven Winners Truffle of Pink Gombrina. So I will put a picture up on the screen of what these look like. I grew them last year right in here. You can see, I'll show you up close. I have one coming back. I planted four. Now these babies get like two to almost three feet tall and wide and they they take a little bit to start going like maybe mid-june mid-july they really start to put on growth and then they just explode so i like to interplant them um well i say i like like i've done it a million times last year i had the idea that i would interplant them with my fox glove because the fox glove only blooms in the spring you can see it is it is not done. There are definitely still new stems, new stalks coming up, but it is a spring flowering plant. It is a biennial, so it only comes up and blooms once every two years. Then you plant, you plant new ones for next year. Um, so I do have two of those growing in that will bloom for me next year. And I'm going to be planting some more of the Camelot mix next year, which blooms in its first year. But regardless, whichever type you have, first year, second year, whatever year, they only bloom in the spring and sometimes very early summer. They do not bloom all summer long. Um, and so I love this little spot with my sweet little <laughs> bird bath and those long, tall spikes behind my lower layers. And so the gomprina that doesn't start really putting on exploding growth until June or July is perfect. I interplant it with the foxgloves, and they are also a tall, pink, airy, spike kind of flower. And so as the foxgloves fade out, the gomprina really starts to take over. And I always have that beautiful, tall, pink element in that mid layer of my garden bed here. Um, this year I'll have the glads behind it, so that'll be even prettier. But I'm very excited. So my mom actually went and just picked those up. I am at home because I have to go every 30 minutes and check on our new puppies. Cinnamon, if you guys have been watching me, I've had Cinnamon with me glued to my hip for the last like two weeks. She finally had her puppies. So they are resting inside. They're not old enough to come out here yet. But I can't leave the house for a while because I have to be on puppy watch. So mom went to get the gumprina and as soon as she gets here, we will pop those in the ground and I will show them off to you. But right now, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to put these two lobelias in the ground and uh, get them watered in. It's coming together, y'all. The truffle of pink gumfrina is here. I'm so excited. I absolutely loved these last year. So they are like little pink cotton candy puff balls. 
the pollinators love them. That we want it. <laughs> um, and they are just so pretty and they really, like, once they get going, they fill in. And they were a massive presence right here behind my little bird bath. <laughs> so, um, Mom went and got these, like I said. She got 18 of them, 10 for her. I asked for eight. So I will show you exactly how I'm going to put them in here. Over here, right down there, I have my one that came back from last year. Now these are annuals, they are not perennials. I'm not sure why that one came back, the other three didn't. I think it's because it's just closest to the porch and it was really protected. And I am down here in Alabama, 8B, almost Florida. So I do think that maybe if I cut these back to the ground next year, and I really want to make a wreath out of these because I have seen so many people do dried gumfrina wreaths and they're beautiful. So I really want to harvest a bunch this year and make a big wreath. So that will give me some motivation, cut them back to the ground. I'm going to mulch over them and we'll just see if they come back all of them next year. So. I'm going to put four in right here. So again, they fill in amongst the foxglove. And then I think I'm going to put four more down on the other side. I really liked these last year and I wanted them in more places in my garden. So I'm going to put them down um, in front of some of my iris that are also about to be out of bloom. And hopefully these will do well on that side as well. It'll also be a bit of an experiment because these are definitely full sun plants this spot gets a lot of sun. It doesn't get quite as much down there. Um, I have my peonies down there because they need less sun. So I do think these will do okay down there. I don't think they'll get as big. So it's gonna be a bit of an experiment to see how they do in other parts of my garden. Maybe next year I'll put them even more places. <laughs> I don't know, but like you saw on the tag, they are um, 22 to 28 tall. Spacing is a minimum of 12 to 18 inches. They get, well, that's the width. Um, they are annuals except for end zones 9A to 11B and hardy down to 30 degrees. They do say you want to fertilize them for best results, so I will start to fertilize them. And full sun, deadheading, not necessary, drought tolerant heat tolerant. I mean, these guys are workhorses. So let's go ahead and place them and see what we think. right behind the little girl. And then I think I want one here on either side back here. That's definitely 12 to 18 inches. No, too far. I think that's better. That'll give me more about 18 inches. Try not to fall over, crush anything. Thought that was a bug, it was my own hair. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. So you can see the fox club are planted in a triangle. And I've just flipped that over and made a reverse triangle with the gumfrina. That way, as the foxglove are going away, the gumfrina are coming up. I do need one more over there.
foxglove right here and I have this hydrangea right here. So it kind of makes it a little hard to put this exactly 12 to 18 inches. I don't want it to crowd the hydrangea either, but I think that's good. I am going to go ahead, pop down to the other side and see where I want to place these for because if there is a better spot for five over there, then I might just stick with four on this side and do five over there. So give me two seconds. Okay, y'all, so I'm definitely gonna move this one down there. I have spots for five of them down kind of behind my peonies. I just planted two peony plants um, and it is their first year they are not going to flower this year. They're just going to grow big and beautiful. And hopefully next year we'll have blooms. But they're pretty little this year. And you need to leave quite a bit of air around peonies. Check out my video that I did. I'm still learning, but I did a lot of research on how to grow peonies in the South. Because it is hard. And I got a lot of good tips from other people. So I want to share them with all of you. But you need a lot of air. There's so many gnats. A lot of air around your peonies when they're fully grown and so there is a lot of space around them right now that they do not need this year but they will need in um, the new year the, the year after that in the next couple years as they grow so filling that space with annuals is not necessary but it is a good way to still have color in that space that will eventually be filled with beautiful peonies and this year can be filled with beautiful gum green. So we're gonna stop talking about it. We're gonna put these babies in the ground. Got my gloves. I've got my little shovel. This area is pretty tilled up. I, um, I planted here last year and I used my auger to really aerate the soil before I planted this year. So I'm going to try to use my little spade so as not to disturb the roots of the things already growing. I do not want to hurt the foxgloves or the hydrangea or anything else that I have in here, especially my foxgloves that I have going for next year because then I have to start at ground zero all over. Also, I need new gloves. I love these, but I have literally, literally more holes in them. All right. I'm going to be careful because I do have a couple seeds in here that still haven't germinated. They might not. They might be dead, but I'm hoping they'll still come up. They're also for fox club. So eventually I want this whole area to be full of fox club as well as over there just popping out of the back border with the gladiolus and the iris, but fox club are expensive. I bought a bunch of seeds to start for next year. I'm gonna start them inside like a real gardener. Just buying things at the big box store or at your local nursery, which is where I got these three. I actually have not seen a single box club at a big box store this year. I've been looking because I wanted to get some more inexpensive ones. Whew. Haven't seen any. These I all bought from Dothan Nurseries, which is my favorite local nursery here in the Allard area. Check them out. Um, other two, the white ones that are almost done, I got from Buds and Blossoms Nursery, which is actually, I believe, owned by the same family. They're a little root bound, so let's just tease them. Perfect. 
I don't know if you are supposed to cut these back as you plant them, like you are with some other things like um, petunias or verbena. I'm not going to because I still want to enjoy the foxglove, so I definitely don't want the gumfrena to start growing like mad yet. They shouldn't. They need heat to really grow. But you know if I should cut them back or not. Leave a comment down below. Definitely saving these because I have eight of them. Mom has 10 and they both came with trays. And does it look, this look like the perfect size pot to plant a foxglove seedling up into to grow before I transplant it to the garden? You're right, it does. See how these have the little pink balls and these have the pink spires? They're very similar. Of course, they're not bells. They aren't multiple spires, but you know, they're pretty close. Gonna get these. Whew. It is literally the end of the day, shadiest part possible, but it's still human and out of freaking mammy, y'all. Gonna get these babies watered in, go pop the other five in, and I'm gonna call it a day. I am hot. All right, y'all, I have my three little truffle pinks here and another two here behind this peony and behind this peony. I also moved the begonias up. So all these begonias were here last year and for some reason they're coming back. So I'm just gonna let them do their thing 
and we'll see how they do. But you saw I had to pull out some old landscaping fabric. I put it in last year when I did the border, um, and it was to suppress all the grass, but the grass is definitely dead under there, and it was starting to inhibit the growth of some of these things. You cut a hole for your plant, but I would notice, at least with the begonias, they weren't growing through properly. The bigger rooted things were fine. So I've just been pulling it from around the begonias, and hopefully they will fill in better this year. But there's that truffle of pink. It should give us a nice mid-layer there once all these iris are done and back there as well. We'll see how they do over here since it's not as sunny. But... In the meantime, let's pop over here real quick and I will show you up close the other ones and we will be done. All right. You can see that baby truffle of pink there and there and whoop, one right there. So this is the one right here in front of this box glove. It's coming back from last year. They're not too different of a size. So we will just see how this area fills in, but I gotta go take care of cinnamon and those puppies, so I'll see y'all later. Bye.